Come in, if you dare. Welcome to a world of the fantastic and the macabre. Welcome to Ghost Stories YYC. Prepare yourself for a tale of terror. Written by Monica Illa. With art by Monica Illa. The Ghost of Belvilly Castle. Why are we going to one of those boring old castles? moaned Charlotte. This one is supposed to be haunted, replied Aiden. Charlotte dawdled behind along the side of the narrow road. At least this walk was beside the water, she thought to herself. She picked up another rock and threw it into Loch Mahan. The plop sound the rock made was entirely satisfying, not to mention the ripples that then followed. The soft evening light made them gleam, and the hypnotized Charlotte followed the tiny waves slowly towards her older brother. Aiden was charging ahead, as he always did, only stopping to look back at his sister when he realized he could no longer hear her trailing footsteps. The siblings had traveled to Belleville with their mother to visit their great-aunt Siobhan in Cork Harbor. Aiden turned around and yelled, Aunt Siobhan said this one is haunted by a faceless lady. Maybe we'll get to see her since it's almost dark. Charlotte remembered their most recent sightseeing recommendations for Mont Chavon and groaned. She had come to the conclusion that while she loved her great-aunt, she did not trust her to actually know what fun was. Nonetheless, Charlotte was still curious. Why is she faceless? It's the ghost of Lady Margaret Hodnett trying to find her reflection, Aiden replied. Lady Margaret Hodnett? What an odd name. How on earth did you know that? Charlotte asked. I googled it responded Aiden in an overly confident tone. Oh, Charlotte replied, knowing this was going to be part of a much longer story. Aiden continued, Lady Margaret lived here in the late 17th century. Google said she was really beautiful and really full of herself. She used to spend all her time looking at herself in mirrors that were all over her room. Apparently some dude named Clon Rockenby repeatedly asked for her to marry him, but she said no every time. He became so obsessed with her that he tried to storm the castle with an army and capture her. Why on earth would anyone do something as stupid as that? Charlotte replied in a tone that was louder than she had anticipated. So that he could force her to marry him, Aiden said, very matter of fact. Aiden, are you making this up? Questioned a now angered Charlotte. Look, Charlotte, it's all here, replied Aiden. Charlotte ran to catch up to him, and more importantly, his phone. For the first time that day, he could tell that she was finally on board with his plan to see a real live ghost. And all it took was a little research. If any place had a legitimate ghost, surely it would be this castle. Gross. It says that he tried to storm the castle, but the Hodnett's defenses fought back for a whole year, with no one going in or out. After a year of fighting, the Belleville Castle finally surrendered. Clon the Moron broke into Margaret's room and saw what their year-long battle had done to her. She was surrounded by the corpses of her starved family, and she was a shriveled shell of her once beautiful self. Enraged, Clon the Moron began to shatter Margaret's mirrors into a million pieces. Distracted, he took his eyes off her, and then she killed him with her sword. Oh jeez. Well, at least it's not meant to be another lame love story. History can be horrifying replied Charlotte. Aiden ignored his sister and continued on. They say that Lady Margaret saw the look of horror on Clon's face when he saw her, and then caught a glimpse of herself in the shards of mirrors on the floor, and slowly went insane. Her ghost still appears to this day haunting the Belleville Castle, searching for a glimpse of her own reflection. Aiden trailed off. Hey Charlotte, look up, we're here. Charlotte looked up and caught a flash of something that sent a chill down her spine. Suddenly, feeling cold to her core. She hoped she'd imagined it until she grabbed the clammy hand of her brother. Aiden, what's that? The look on his face was answer enough. <laughs>